question is from Lewis Wooten, 92. How have you all dealt with being disciplined and going after and achieving personal fitness goals whilst maintaining a healthy social life and personal relationships? Uh, I think the going after fitness goals can contribute positively to your social life and personal relationships so long as it's not a, an obsession or a, an extreme fitness goal. Here's the thing that I think a lot of people um, need to realize. This took me a long time to realize. If you have super lofty, extreme goals, then that means you're going to have to apply a certain amount of singular obsessive focus, yeah. in which case it's probably going to take away people from- People will suffer around you. Yeah, it's going to take away from certain things. And that's okay, so long as you don't live there for the rest of your life. I think it's when you start to get problems where you're just singularly focused on one thing and everything falls apart and that's where you are forever. Then there's an issue. But, I mean, you're, if you're starting a business, if you want to get to a new PR, if you want to compete in a high-level competition, are you going to be able to go out as much and hang out as much with your friends and that kind of stuff? Probably not. You know, It's going to take some, some, some kind of obsession. There's yeah, it's just the level of uh, what it means to you. You know, like what what are you trying to be the best of the best that's ever done it? You're going to have to sacrifice a lot, and that's uh, you know, there's an extreme to that. And so the the further you go in the extreme path is is where like most of your eggs are going to go, and that's that's like at a certain point you just got to weigh that out. Like, how much can I still balance like having friendships, having all these people and like contributing towards them? Cause really, you know, it's about being self pursuing something. I'm doing this all for myself, but how much of it is just yourself? Or are you going to go ahead and, uh, you know, be available to and make time for other people like that? All that stuff is going to like feed into what you're going to experience. It's an it's an interesting thought for me because I obviously went through this um, when I competed. It's by far the most uh, selfish thing that I've ever done in my entire life, uh, and and it it wasn't a singular selfish thing. It was you know uh, over the course of three years, like three years of being dedicated to this crazy goal, right? Like I mean, it, to go from being way out of shape to all the way the professional level uh, competing on a stage is was a journey like that that that's not a, that's not going to be any, I, I went pretty fast too like that's a, that was a shortcut for most people so um, and in that time I remember uh, especially Katrina's family because her family uh, they they celebrate a lot and and the way they do that is food and drink and um, you know that was like a, a very regular thing that would happen and. I got a lot of grief and a lot of shit from her family and my friends, and I got teased. And um, you know, I didn't I didn't let it bother me because I was so focused on my goal, and I had a, I had an, uh, a vision, like I knew what I was doing, like I knew I had a plan on this wasn't going to be forever. Um, that I I set a serious goal for myself. I knew what comes with serious goals like that is sacrifice, and I was sacrificing some of these social events and things that we're going to do. Now, here's the thing that's interesting is while I was going through it, you know, I'm probably, I probably got uh, invited to less parties or things because people knew that I wasn't going to drink or eat like that. Um, I got teased and I got shit from her family uh, for doing all that. But when I followed through on everything and I, and I reached that crazy goal and then built something around it, um, I, I was revered in her family from it. And now everybody is, I mean, they talk about it, how proud they are of, of watching that and they can't believe it. And I remember when you started and used to say this and, oh, we used to get so annoyed that you'd bring your plastic Tupperware around and, and shit like that. And Especially because you did it the way you said you would. You, you got into it and left. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, so, and that's what I think this person has to really ask yourself when you're, when you are uh, trying to go after achieving some, some personal fitness goals is why are you doing it um, and to what level and then, you know, and have a full plan. You know, my plan is I'm, I'm going to achieve this sort of that. But then after I get to that goal, I'm going to have more balance. And, and that's exactly what I said I would do when I, uh, when I got into it. It was funny because when we got into this podcast, I was in the middle of this already. And so, you know, early, I don't know, first 500 episodes or so, um, you know, everybody thought I was the, you know, the, the bodybuilder guy. And, 
I knew all along that I wasn't that guy. It was I had a serious goal at that time, and uh, how how I do uh, anything is how I do everything. If I put my mind to something and say I'm going to accomplish this goal, I'm going to fucking do it. And, you know, and that means that I'm going to probably be talking about it all the time and focused on it all the time and, you know, maybe rubbing some people the wrong way about it because they don't like it or it may, it's a, a direct reflection for them and how they're not addressing their health and fitness goals. But I didn't give a shit about any of that stuff. It was, I'm, I'm going to hit this goal. And then when I do, I'll have more balance in my life. So um, I, I, I think there's there's ways uh, around it. And I, I still came to social events. I just carried my Tupperware and let people tease me and let people razz me about it and give me shit. Like, again, I was focused on a goal. Where you're, where you don't want to be is the person that, that speaks out this goal or says you're going to do all this shit and you're wishy-washy and you're back and forth. Because at the end of the day, I think that's where you'll lose, lose respect from your peers and, and, and others is when you mm -hmm. say you're going to do something and then you don't follow through. Either one, don't fucking talk about it, just do it. Or if you're going to talk about it and say you have these serious goals, then execute. And even the people that are teasing you while you're going through it or giving you a hard time, they'll, they'll, come around. they'll respect you. They'll respect you at the end of it. Yeah, I also think uh, people get into trouble with this when they don't realize the reason why they're so disciplined and focused. Is it because you're trying to fill an insecurity that can never be filled? You know, let's say, you know, using Adam's example, let's say he went into this because he was insecure about his body. Right. He'd still be doing it. Right. It would never end because that can never be cured by reaching new bodybuilding, you know, goals or whatever. That's such a good point. The goal was specifically to get a pro card, leverage that through social media business. It was actually one of the more important things that helped boost Mind Pump early on. It was the only social audience that we had. I had zero social media, anything. Justin had very little. Doug definitely had zero. Um, so it was a part of a plan. So that's where balance comes from. This is why it's okay to, this is why it doesn't counter. I think people think balance counters discipline. You know, which one do I do? No, it's not. If you have a goal and you're doing something and it's for a particular purpose, that's okay. But if yeah. but it depends on the purpose. Like if the purpose is to, like I need to be, you know, I'm super focused on becoming a millionaire. Well, why? Because then I can retire, make money, have balance. Okay. Is it, or no, because I, I need money because it makes me feel good. Well, you're going to be doing this forever. You're never going to find balance. You're going to be doing this forever. and It'll never be enough. That's where people come into the, the, the issues, I think, with the, the obsession is when you find yourself obsessed and there is no end in sight. Um, but, I mean, this is how you succeed. If you really want to mm -hmm. kick ass and succeed, and this is why you gotta I- stretch yourself. And this is, the, I'll tell you this one right now. If you're listening and you don't have kids, that's the time. That's the best time. Not saying you can't do it when you have kids, but when you have children, you're, uh, it's very difficult to find that kind of obsessive- focus because you'll be taken away from the most important thing uh, that you've probably ever had in your entire life. So if you're in your 20s, 30s, yeah. you don't have kids. Being selfish is not going to benefit you if you have kids. Exactly. <laughs> I'll tell you that right That's now. That's when you'll kick yourself later yeah. on and be like, man, it's it was my idea. Well, you said it. You, I think you said it best, which uh, is what I was trying to allude to, which is you, you really have to question why whatever it is that you're doing and have a plan and have and, and understand the purpose behind all of it. Because you're right. If it's, if it's rooted in insecurities, if I if it was because I was insecure about the way I looked, and so that's what drove me to be so good at it, that'll never end, and you'll just find something else, and you'll just and you'll be completely obsessed with it until you address the root cause. But there's nothing wrong with saying, "Hey, you know what? I'd like to see what uh, I feel like when I get to this level of shape. I'd like to know how strong I'd be. I've never committed myself." to a diet and a plan for six months, and I want to see how it would enhance my work life, my family life, my personal life, my overall health, and that's a, it's, it's an important goal for yourself. Like, fucking A, go get it. Go get it, and you're going to make some sacrifices. You're not going to be able to eat cake every fucking weekend with your friends. You won't be able to have drink, drink on the weekdays. You probably won't be able to have Sunday fun day, but that's okay, though. The the experience, I mean, I, I look back at those three years and I mean, that was one of the best experiences of, of my life, not just because it was amazing to get in that great a shape, but I mean, as long as I've been doing this for and, and all the books I've read and all the certifications and experience and knowledge I have, it still taught me a ton about myself and it, it made me that much better of a coach. So the value that it added uh, for my life was incredible. So uh, I mean, if you, if you go into it with that attitude that w what you're doing, the reason why you're making the, the sacrifice on the social side, um, I, I think it'd be very beneficial. Totally.